Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Got cameraman Caleb with me. Got a car that's kind of torn apart behind me. Some of you guys probably have seen this video already. In fact, as I'm introducing our next car, which is this piece of crap Hyundai Elantra sitting right here, uh, we're waiting for some spark plugs still on the Bonneville. And now we're starting a new video, a new troubleshooting job while we're waiting. And it's this Hyundai. Let's see what this car is doing. Apparently it runs like crap. That's all I got from Pete. And uh, I don't know, let's, let's start the car, see what it does. Most likely the battery's dead. We'll see. Got nothing. Are my headlights on right now? Barely. Are they They're are, like... super dim? Yeah. So the battery's dead. <laughs> There you go, dead battery, of course. <laughs> Although, Super dead. are they? I mean, like. No, they're not. They're just clouded up. They're so they're not dim at all. No, actually, if you put your face right into the light, so that battery is not dead. This does not crank. So is this a nose? I thought this was a, a running problem. That Pete lied to me. See if it starts in neutral. All right, time out. Stop the presses. Is that the saying? <laughs> this car is supposed to be a running problem. It doesn't start. I mean, it doesn't even try to start. No click from the starter, no nothing. So now I gotta go down and ask Pete, what are we doing here, man? Are we doing a drivability job or are we doing a no crank? Because this car does not start. Pete, this car doesn't even crank. No. They're complaining about a drivability problem? No start, he said. No start. Yeah. So you lied to me. I did. You told me it was a running problem. Didn't you? It Which? Wasn't starting. I think he cranked it to the battery dead as he checked it. This one? No, the batteries, the headlights are bright. Okay. Um, but it doesn't, okay, so this is a no, no start. start. No start. This is going to be a no crank diagnosis, not a no start. There's a difference. So for you customers out there that are watching this, you got to make sure you communicate this stuff with your service manager you talk to. Is the car not starting? Is it not cranking? There's a difference. A no crank is where you don't hear anything, right? The starter doesn't even make a sound. A no start would be when the starter cranks, like our Bonneville that we were working on, well, different video, but when you can hear the starter, I used to have to make the sound for the customer. I'd get the same reply over and over until I made the sound. So, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, does the car go rrr, 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 or does it do nothing? <laughs> you have to make the sound. This is a no crank problem we're doing on the Elantra um, but we're gonna pause here for a second because we got our spark plugs back for the Bonneville and we'll come back to this thing okay hoping to do a real fast one with you guys today I have a vehicle here it's a 2002 Hyundai Elant Elantra I think and it's a no start you see I'm turning the key and we got nothing, nothing. No click, no sound, no nothing. Check engine light is on, the key on bulb check tells us computer's most likely alive. But I'm worried about battery starting system problem. Next step we can do, let's try throwing this in neutral. And try it again. Nothing at all. So that kind of helps you as a guide to the park neutral switch. Next step, is our battery dead or do we have a starting system problem? So staying low tech, what I wanna do is show you guys a quick battery test. Ed, go ahead and turn the headlights on. You see how bright the headlights are? I don't know how well the camera's showing that. And go ahead and crank it. Go ahead again. All right, the headlights are going out when we're cranking it, but that is a design feature on this car, so we can't do the test I wanted to do which is see how bright the headlights stay while you're cranking it. 
which can give you an indication of battery condition. But these lights are bright, suggesting we do not have a battery problem. There's one other thing we can do. So when the headlight test fails, what you can do is use the dome lights. Go ahead and crank that for me again, Ed. You see how the dome lights do not dim whatsoever? This is not a battery problem. All right, this next step, this is what we do when we're trying to help people out that are stranded or you're in a bind, you're trying to get your car going. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on the starter solenoid with this screwdriver. I cannot get the camera down there, but you're gonna have to take my word on this that I'm tapping on the starter solenoid and I'm gonna have my partner here, Ed, crank this for me whenever I tell him. Yeah, locate this thing, kind of hard to get to. So I have this real, real long skinny screwdriver. Gotta try to crank it. That is a no-go on that test. That's not cool. So I wanted to end it there. Now, was I hitting on the starter is the question. Now, we'll follow this up with electrical checks if we need to. If I cannot prove this starter here. The symptom was it just uh, went to start it one day and it wouldn't start. So, it wasn't like it shut down or anything. I'm not really worried about the engine seizing up. Got to try to crank it. All right, so that's the quick and dirty test. Unfortunately, did not prove to be helpful here. I need to do power and ground testing next and before we can call this starter motor as being bad. All right, thank you, Ed. All right, so I am still continuing to stay low tech, just using a regular incandescent style test light. Pulled the air filter box out of the way so I could get back to the starter. And there are two main checks that we want to do with any starter. And that is to check the small gauge wire, which is that one right there. And then just to the left of it, there's some conduit on the cable. The main cable is the heavy one. We want to check that one. That one's hot all the time. And then the one to the right, the smaller one, that is my solenoid control wire or S post which comes from the ignition switch, park neutral switch, relay, and all that. First thing we want to do, make sure the test light lights, known good ground. Let's go down underneath now. Okay, go ahead and crank that. Cranking. So he's holding that in the crank position. I got no light here at all. Let's go to the heavy cable. Let off the crank position. Off the crank. Alright, you see that light is lit all the time on the heavy cable. Go ahead and crank it. Cranking. Okay, good. So nothing wrong with our heavy cable. Alright, see there's light on and off. I'm just touching it on the post. And then the smaller one, see where I'm I'm touching that right on the terminal of the starter. And we have no control there. So what that means, guys, this does not need a starter. This is a good lesson on why you don't want to beat the crap out of them. Right, Timmy? Whenever the, whenever the starter doesn't uh, work after beating on it, we don't want to keep beating on it. Because right. you might be missing power, and that's exactly what we have. Now, because I can't really get a screwdriver in there to jump the two, Tim, I'm going to use my power probe. I'm going to use my PP4. My PP. <laughs> What's the four stand for? Centimeter? Power down. probe four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, trying to show you what I'm doing is really difficult, but I'm just uh, gonna crank this up now, hopefully, with the power probe hitting the switch now. Shut it off, Timmy. Uh, leave the key off for me this time so the car doesn't start. Okay. I'm gonna crank it again. Okay, uh, go ahead and turn the key on and we'll let it run for a second. Key on. So again, good lesson on don't beat on the starter. We have an electrical problem here. Now we gotta figure out why we're missing power down there. Guys, shut that off. And 
now we've also created a check engine light. Uh, we shouldn't have created a check engine light. I didn't unplug anything. So if you have a check engine light on, that is a separate issue. Uh, we're not going to have a check engine light for a starting system or starting circuit. So if that check engine light's on, separate issue. We'll tell the the customer, we'll tell Pete he's got to pay me again for that one. <laughs> no, we're doing a no crank diagnostic. We're not doing a okay. check engine light one. Make sense? Yep. Tim just asked me a good question off camera about the air cleaner being off. And absolutely that would be an issue that could set a check engine light. But I told him that this is a MAP engine. There is no mass airflow in this air intake. No intake air temp sensor. Taking the air filter off would not set the check engine light. Good enough for me. And you know, it, you mentioned airflow. Definitely the characteristics of airflow would change, but um, not enough in that small amount of runtime that would ever bang that light that fast. Okay. If this was a mass airflow, that'd be a whole different ball game. So, all right, guys, I'm trying to avoid wiring diagrams and all that other stuff. And I did hear some clicking in the relay box uh, when Tim was turning the key. So let's see if we can identify which relay was clicking. Oh, and they give me a layout. Thank you. Ford likes to give you a layout too, but they don't, they just number them and they don't tell you what they are. All right, so there's my 100 amp battery the Koreans did something starters, right. right? This is my starter relay right here. So let's pop that relay out. And honestly, oh, it's all corroded. It's like somebody was in here, look, then scratched it. This is an ongoing problem. Somebody was in here and cleaned the contacts of this relay. There's crap in the box itself. I'll bet you if I wiggle this, it'll start. It'll start. You want to try that for me? Nothing yet? Okay. Let's swap this relay with what? AC. With the can, uh, yeah. Now, this is a five pin. It's the same internal design, but I can't, there's no hole. Let's make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So I was gonna swap relays here for you guys, but the problem is I have a five pin and a four pin. They both will go in the same spots, but where the four pin is for my starter, let's move this so you can see it. See how it's missing that center piece. So I could use this one. This is the main relay though. I can't use the main relay. That's gonna interrupt power to something else. Most likely, I don't know, we could try it. Main relay, swapping that over. Go ahead, try it. Nothing. Yeah, see, I don't think we can do that. Um, I may have a four pin relay sitting in my toolbox. Um, so load and control. Let's, before I go grab a relay, let's just pretend we don't have one and how do we troubleshoot this? How do we know, like, see if we get a better shot of this now. Look at the green corrosion and you can see the scrape mark. Somebody was in there. This one, you really can see it. And what I suspect is the whole internal of this relay is all corroded as well. You see the back side of that pin. We are definitely dealing with water intrusion. Um, so the question then for you guys is, do you have enough knowledge to check a relay circuit? I'm going to teach you two loads or two feeds is a standard. So we have load and control. My load side is here and here. And my control side, wait, is that in the shot? Yes. And my control side is here and here. So I should have one of these two should be hot um, when we're cranking on the control side. Just hold it in the crank position, Timmy. Go ahead, let off and do it again and off. So there's your control side power feed, it is there. And then this is standard, any relay. Now load side, we wanna check the same thing. Typically a load side will be hot all the time. And it is, there's that one there. And this is the one that we go down to the starter. So this is hot all the time. Go ahead and hit the key, won't matter. Okay, okay, good. So we have, we have what we need as far as making this uh, starter work. This relay is potentially bad. Uh, there's one other piece you can do. Um, you're on, go ahead, hit the key again, crank it. 
All right, so that's control side power. And now that means that this pin is a constant ground. The opposite of it, that'd be this pin here. And all I need to do is switch my test light to battery positive to check that ground. And that tells you your control circuit's good. This is the wire that goes down to the starter. In fact, I can use my test light also and uh, potentially go to battery positive. No, there is no continuity to ground there. Um, I was thinking of one of the windings, but that's on the solenoid circuit. Um, yeah, that's an open contact. That's not gonna be a valid test for the motor. Uh, but that would be the pin if I used my power probe I could hit that pin which would crank it independent of our ignition switch um, and I need to be careful with this power probe if I do something wrong I'm gonna cook it but I'm, yeah. I'm confident in what I'm saying here this is my wire to my starter watch uh, why didn't that work? That should have. 12, zero. That should have cranked it. So, you know what that means, Tim? You got bad luck. No, yeah. Um, that, that, that should have, that should have cranked the starter. Um, in, in spite of this corrosion that we're seeing here, what that means is that corrosion is most likely down inside the box. That should absolutely be cranking that thing right now. And it is not. And so, yeah, that should be showing me uh, continuity. It's an electric motor. Um, but I'm on the solenoid side. I keep forgetting that. I'm on the solenoid side connected. Yeah, this, there should be continuity to ground here. In fact, the power probe showing me there is not. This box is bad. Not only do we have a relay that's all corroded, but we have a box issue here. Now I need to prove it to you. Um, I'll go grab my relay out of my truck and show you that even with another relay, this thing's not going to start. All right, so I, I had a five pin in my truck and I just pulled the center pin. I just broke it off just to uh, show you as a test point. If this ends up starting this vehicle, it will only be because I moved the pin down underneath. And if we wiggle this again, we can make it a no start. So I don't expect it to start. Go ahead and try it. No. So the relay's clicking and it was before, but you know, relays that click don't tell you what you need to know. Um, we have a wiring problem in this box. Can we show you? And it needs a relay too. No question about it, how corroded that is. But the water intrusion has gotten down into this box. And it uh, looks like two 10 millimeter bolts. Now it isn't really recommended to... Did I, I just grabbed a nine. Dumb. You, want me to get you know, I'm glad that... It wasn't just a relay, because you hear those guys are like, why don't you just swap the relay? Well, so most, of, them that you did. Right, most of the time when you swap the relay, that doesn't fix anything. Right. And so the swap the relay crowd, they don't know how to troubleshoot. They just want me to do the easiest thing possible. Immediate fix. And what they don't understand is, I'm showing you how to address it if it isn't the relay. Right. That's the stuff you're not gonna find. Not your typical YouTube video anyway. Here it is, swap the relay, we're good to go. Look, we changed the relay, it didn't work. Take it to your nearest right. mechanic. And that test with the power probe was actually key. That power probe can get you in trouble if you're not yeah. careful. But I was confident in what we were doing. So to be clear about that pin and why I was surprised, when I did my test light to battery positive on this pin, the reason the test light should light is it would be finding a ground. See, now it's lighting. See, it's lighting my test light. I had the keys off. But it doesn't matter. If you turn that key on, this is um, connected to battery positive. I'm finding a ground through the solenoid 
winding right now. So it goes down, that's the load side of the feed side of the solenoid winding, which goes through a coil and through the motor ground. And uh, see if I can make it crank now. Let's get this back on there. This power probe's gonna, gonna also show me a ground path on the tip. See, it's, that light's green now. If I load that, now see the see it went away. My ground went away. Yep. So once I loaded that circuit, it was enough heat to open the circuit back up. We got a high resistance problem. See now even my test light's not lighting. Ground problem or not a ground problem, wiring problem right there, underneath the box, in the box. All right, sorry about the rain noise here. We got a canopy and we're getting wet. All right, so. As you hear the rain falling in the background, it is this wire right here. And it's all green and corroded on the inside. I don't, we may have a problem further downstream here in the harness. It would be that wire that should be showing me a ground right now. And it is not. So my problem is actually not even in the box. It is in this harness, and I know that because I can follow it here, and it goes to this red wire here that is taped to this particular part of the harness right here. And that's my main feed probably it goes to the starter is my guess maybe I'm not sure but this is my this is my load side let me just make sure yep that is my load side feed for the starter or load side yeah load side feed I keep saying load side let's let's be clear about what I'm talking about here load side of the relay is the control side of the starter okay so i apologize if i've been messing you guys up in my terminology the control side of the starter would be the s post the one that you can see in this little image next to me here that i'm touching my test light to that would be the control side of the starter that's the solenoid side the relay here is controlling power to that so our load side of the relay is the control side of the starter and then we have a control side of the relay as well so control side of the relay load side of the relay i apologize if i'm getting you guys mixed up on my terminology this is my load side power supply right here let me switch my polarity to battery positive sorry battery negative this is as you can see my load side of the relay power supply that supply jumps over to this wire right here to energize the starter and again right now that wire should be hot if i go to battery positive sorry not hot that wire right now should have a ground it's getting grounded right now through the solenoid itself to ground there is no power there so i'll actually read a ground on that wire, test light connected to battery positive. I just switched to polarity. You're not seeing the, the polarity of the test light there. Let's get that in the shot. So test light, battery positive. When I touch a ground, light should light. Okay. The weird part about that for you guys right now, I'm saying that this is the load side to the starter S post. This is the hot wire that goes down to the S post to the starter. Right now that wire should be showing a ground because the other side of the winding is attached to ground. There it is. Did you see that light just come on while I was talking? So right now that's what we want to see. But when we load it, let's load it with the power probe again. What you'll see When I load this, that light's gonna go out when I put power there because 12 and 12, right? 12 volts here. And if I put 12 volts here, that light's gonna go out. But the thing is, when I take this, this 12 away, that light should come back on. You'll see that it won't watch. 
So what's going on is in the harness, we have a high resistance problem that uh, is creating heat. Actually, yeah, watch the test light. That's an awesome lesson on heat and current flow. That light's getting brighter as I'm talking. Um, but when I loaded it, I made heat, which made the resistance even higher, and that wouldn't even support the bulb current flow anymore. So we can actually leave that there as a guide. Our problem is not in the box, regardless of the relay and the corrosion that we saw. Um, that, wasn't, that wasn't the problem. Somebody else was here. This makes more sense now. Somebody else was here and trying to fix this problem and they were not able to. And that's what, why we see all those scrape marks on there. They found a problem, but not the problem. And the problem is not in this box. The problem is down in this harness somewhere. So we're gonna do a visual inspection here and see what we can find. I'll try to stay out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. Kind of nice that we can see where that wire goes which is right here. It runs down this harness, which goes where? Splits, there's a connector right here. That's the one. That's the wire that goes to my starter. Is this my connection problem right here? See how, how bright that is now? Let me try something here. Nope. Oh, all right. You heard the beeping. Um, the beeping is the ground and power. Um, our, our problem is down this way. So my connector from here, here up to there is fine. I still have my issue on this side of the circuit. What I was just doing there was just taking my power probe and uh, using it to uh, complete the circuit. Yeah, I got nothing, no ground anymore. And so the key in finding resistance problems would be areas of heat and vibration. You guys that have been following me know this very well. What I'm looking for is damage in the harness where, where it might have been rubbing on something. You know, the crazy part about this is my connection. I could have an issue right at the connection on the starter itself could be where my problem is because I when I checked it again looking at this image here when I checked it I was on the tab which is the place you want to go checking it on the wiring itself we would have maybe put a starter in this if that's the case so in other words if I would have back probed the solenoid wire instead of the tab where I'm connected if that's where my problem is we would call it as a bad starter and uh, it's just not an accurate test so where I connected to was most accurate or can I get my hand down in there yeah, let me do this let me plug this back in give you guys something to watch while I'm messing around down inside test light let's get rid of that beep yeah you see it's still going out still losing my ground Harness goes there and then there, right back to the starter. I'm not going to get my hand in here for you guys, or I'm not going to get my camera in here for you guys, but I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wiggle the starter 
connection. That's what it is, look. Look. I am grabbing the connector, the pin, on the starter, where it's connected, and I'm making and breaking that. Here, watch this. S steady 12. Come on. Crank, damn it. This why this connector is bad right here. Absolutely my problem is right at the starter. Regardless of the green corrosion we saw in the box. You see as I'm moving that, I just should be able to crank this and I can't. It's not letting me. What the heck? Is it that bad? Let me try it down there again because I can't crank it from up here and I should be able to. That lights off because I unplugged the connector down here. Nope, there ain't nothing wrong with the starter down there. So it's just the, the connection on the starter itself. This, this connector is bad. Extremely bad. Oh, I just broke. Did you see that? Just broke it. Just broke it. Right where it was attached. Right there, boys and girls. Bad end. Bad cable end. Shows you really the importance of knowing how to do voltage drop testing. I hope you guys understand what was going on there. This will be something I'll definitely go over with my class at the school review all the testing procedures i need to get a connector for this and uh yeah wire it back up it's gonna be a temporary fix oh it's ugly looking that corrosion has gone all the way up this harness i'm gonna let uh I'm gonna let this garage owner know they need to redo this probably um, wiring harness section. I wanna finish this for you guys though. So we're gonna do something a little bit temporary. This isn't, I don't like this as a permanent fix. All right, let's plug that back into the starter. Voltage drop right at the connector, guys. So now think about that. What if we would have tested the wire and back probed it? It would have tested good and we would have said bad starter, okay? I wanna be clear about that. That's why, that's absolutely why you want to go on the tab where we connected to for proper diagnosis. Now. What I did wrong, if you want to say I did something wrong, what I did or what I could have done to shortcut this and not take this box apart was once you find that you have no power on the tab, your next step should be to move back to the wire itself and then that addresses that area. I didn't do that because of its location and where I am. I chose to go to the box next and then we saw the corrosion on the relay, right? And then that changed our direction there a little bit but now that that's connected you see we have a ground again this is a power but it's showing a ground because it's making its way through the winding of the solenoid now when I hit this it should crank now cool and I bet you I, oh, I bent my test light oh, that's not cool all right, I'll fix that later. Um, if I put the original relay back in, you know what, let me put this cover on first. I bet you if I put this original relay back in, this cranks and the car starts. Heat and vibration, surprisingly, that particular thought process, um, didn't find any rub through marks. That's what we usually find in a case like this. It just happened to be right where the end line was. And it's a non-insulated connector to begin with. So 
really just kind of a poor design, but it's pretty typical of starters. You don't see those solenoid wires being insulated very well. The solenoid control wire of the starter I'm referring to. The S-Post. So as I'm bolting this back up, guys, here's what this needs. It needs that harness stripped back, that wire stripped back to where the corrosion has not permeated. Okay, so it might be a six or seven inches. Then we have to replace that section of wire and another connector. That's the right way to do it. Now we're okay right now. You know, in a pinch, what I showed is good, but this this will most likely come back within a year of, of the way it sits right now, uh, given that connector. I don't know. It, it could last longer than that. I just I'm not comfortable with that fix as far as. A YouTube video goes and showing you guys what's the proper way to do things and, and that particular one was not in I just really want to prove a point here okay so I'm putting the corroded relay back in and yeah I have everything connected <laughs> this car should start let's try it from the key this time Bam. All right, here comes another storm, so I gotta get out of here. Let's wrap this up real quick. Final thoughts. This is a money maker right here for you guys that are working in the field. The way I would sell this job is uh, you get a one hour diagnostic fee for your no crank diagnosis and uh, the repair for that, I'd say maybe a half an hour for a repair, is to cut out that section of harness to wire in uh, and just replace that piece of wire, wire in a better, uh, connector than what I used and uh, replace the relay so half an hour for that so there's one and a half hours and then when you're done right the car runs everybody's happy because honestly this is a no parts re repair cost for the customer it's all labor and then you know we have a check engine light on so your next uh, way that you proceed is you write on your repair order car runs drives check engine lights on recommend diagnosis for the check engine light and you sell another hour diagnostic fee for the check engine light. That's how I proceed with this car. This is money right here. This is absolute money. Voltage drop testing, voltage fundamentals, all stuff that I'm teaching in uh, my classroom at Rosedale Technical College. Um, I've recorded all of this stuff. It is on Scanner Danner Premium. There's a 14 day free trial. Guys, you owe it to yourself to go to that channel and learn how to do these types of fundamental tests. Voltage drops. Uh, I'll put some related videos in here that you guys can see some other starting system tests where we're doing voltage drop measurements and also again, Scanner Danner Premium where you can watch those classroom lectures. So. Thanks for joining me, guys. This one was fun. I'll see you next time. Well, there's something I almost forgot to tell you guys, and that was the box. Um, the only thing you can really do with that is, well, there's multiple ways. You could repin the whole thing, but they're not that bad inside. Change the relay and uh, use some, some type of contact cleaner, electrical contact cleaner, a small brush, tighten the pins up, plug a new relay in. That's how I'd handle the box part. It's up to you guys on what you would do, but this one isn't bad enough to say, hey, it needs a new power distribution box. So again, I'll catch you next time.